Hi, after a long time uh, of not being here on YouTube, I've prepared another video in which I'm going to show you how you can uh, price zero coupon bonds uh, under some particular uh, interest rate model using uh, partial differential equations. And I'm going to implement uh, the solutions in Mathematica. Uh, well, uh, I will basically go through uh, or follow this outline. Uh, first of all, I will just uh, show you uh, the risk neutral valuation formula, which is uh, crucial in order to derive the PDE. Also, I'll show you uh, some behavior of the Numer asset, and uh, I will connect some uh, formulas uh, related to numerator to the stochastic different equation uh, that drives the short rate. Then we will move forward to uh, implementation in Mathematica and finally uh, I'll give you a comparison of the results um, with uh, closed form solutions uh, if these are available of course because you can't have a closed form solution for uh, this exponential Vashicek model. Okay, so that's to the uh, outline and uh, let's get started. So you probably know that uh, if you have uh, a contract uh, then you can price it using a risk neutral valuation formula. So uh, this contract is a uh, zero coupon bond that pays one at maturity and uh, at time small t I denote it like this, okay? And uh, the, the risk neutral valuation formula tells you that uh, the value of the bond divided by uh, some state of money market account is equal to the expectation under the risk neutral measure of the same. At maturity. Okay, so big T is the uh, maturity of the uh, zero coupon bond and it's an arbitrary positive number. Uh, what we also know about the bond is that it pays uh, one at maturity, which means that this is for sure equal to one. Substituting uh, this expression to this formula, we have that the expectation that we have the expectation of one above uh, uh, the money market account at uh, the maturity of the bond. Okay, so that's the risk neutral valuation formula and the risk neutral valuation formula uh, also said that, says that uh, this process, this discounted process, is a martingale which means uh, it's a driftless process. Okay, so this is to the uh, risk uh, neutral valuation formula and uh, now we could uh, write down uh, an explicit rela relation for uh, the, the money market account. The money market account is defined as the exponential of the following integral. So it's just simply an integral of uh, the short rate uh, until the time t. Okay, so this is how much you will have uh, at time t if you uh, uh, start with one, and uh, in every infinitesimal uh, moment you you just simply re-roll the account. Okay, so that's that's this is by definition. Okay, and uh, we can also define a discount process that's inverse of the money market account oh, sorry it's I say it's inverse 
and uh, clearly it's equal to this expression. So uh, uh, we have these fundamental expressions here and uh, now we would like to introduce uh, an interest rate model. Interest rate model is a model of uh, the short rate and uh, I'll start with Vashicek model which is defined as uh, the, by the flowing stochastic differential equation so a and b are some kind of coefficient coefficients and uh, dt is the time step then we have sigma uh, times the increment of the linear process so I could I should actually write here that it's uh, the linear process under the uh, risk neutral measure but uh, because we will not uh, doing we will not be doing any uh, changes of measure uh, this will just simply you know the linear process under the risk neutral measure okay so this is the Vashicek uh, stochastic differential equation for the short rate these are there are three parameters a b and sigma uh, this is uh, some kind of uh, mean reversion intensity it, it says how quickly uh, the short rate is is returning to some um, long-term level B and Sigma is a volatility parameter of the short rate okay so uh, we have uh, these expressions here these are given and now we want to derive the PDE from uh, this risk neutral evaluation formula so mm, uh, we know that uh, this here is a martingale which means that mm, it is a driftless process so we are we are basically uh, interested in what uh, the differential of this uh, of this process behaves like okay I can rewrite it using the u that I've defined here as a product so it's a differential of a product times u of t okay and uh, because there is a this process here uh, is an ITO process we know that we have to apply uh, Ito's lemma for uh, for a product of two processes in order to get the differential. So uh, we have that dB times U of T plus du. times BT BTT plus both the differentials okay so the product of, of the differentials so times this one times the differential of the uh, oh, discount process uh, this one will go to zero uh, I will not go uh, to more details in here but believe me this one is this term is zero and these two terms are non-zero okay and uh, in order to put some real expressions for DB and DU we uh, need to determine them so I'll do the easier first and I will come up with du and the du is uh, the differential of the u process here and it's obviously if you take a look at this expression so then you see that the differential of u is given 
as follows. It's minus R T times U of T times DT. Okay? So that's the uh, differential of the uh, U process. That's quite straightforward. But uh, in the case of uh, the DB, it will be slightly more complicated. Okay? So we know that uh, the bond is driven by, by an Ito process, which is here, uh, which means that we have to apply an Ito's lemma in order to, de to derive the differential of, uh, of the bond price. Okay? So uh, we have that the partial of the bond price with respect to T times DT plus the partial of the bond price times differential of the short rate uh, plus one half of the second order partial times ER ER okay so that's the uh, uh, differential of the bond price according to Ito's lemma uh, what you also know it is that ER is defined right here so we can substitute it to the equation. Also, what we what we can see is that the product of dr and d, dr uh, will be sigma squared time, times dt because dv squared is dt. So what we have, I'll just copy this one and uh, I'll show you what we have. Instead of this we use the definition of the definition of the uh, differential here and this product is equal to sigma squared times dt okay I can actually delete the brackets here and uh, move sigma squared here okay so what we can see is that we have several dt related terms in the differential and one term that is related to differential of the Wiener process. So we have the differential of the bond and the differential of the of the discount process and we can go back uh, uh, to the uh, differential of the two and we have this one times ut plus differential of u it's actually a minus here times b of t plus and then I set it zero what we have to do now is that we collect the DT related terms okay so we actually have something times DT and we can also factor out U of T okay so now I'm trying to collect the DT terms and it will be as follows
and don't forget that 1D T term is hidden over here. And I said we are factoring out the U term. And uh, what's remaining is the DW term here. So uh, it's going to be U of T times sigma times the differential of the Wiener process. Okay? So we got some kind of ugly looking expression for the differential, but we are quite close to the PDE. The thing is that we said this is a martingale, okay? And a martingale is a drift, driftless process. So uh, what it means is that uh, basically this DT related term must be zero. And in order uh, that the term is zero, this is always non-zero. Uh, so the only way how to make it zero is set this expression to be zero. So I'll copy that. and set it to zero. Well, that's our PDE. So uh, that's the partial differential equation that uh, that basically uh, is related to how the price of the zero coupon bonds bond evolves uh, through the time uh, subject to the parameters a, b and sigma and some uh, short rate that we observe. Okay, so what we can do now, uh, we can also specify the terminal condition, which says that at maturity, let me put here R as a representative of the short rate, uh, the price of the zero coupon bond is always one. This is what we started with right here. Okay. So this will serve uh, as a boundary condition or, or terminal condition, okay? So having this, we can go to Mathematica. Let me close this one for a moment and uh, try to uh, code the, the solution for, for this partial differential equation. We just we adjust this window so that uh, we can see as much as possible. And let me start with uh, some set of parameters. It will be better for illustration. So I say that A uh, will be uh, 0.3. B is the long term. Uh, level of the short rate will be 0 0.02 sigma it's a typically very small number it could be 0 0.01 and uh, let's say that our finite horizon that the bond we are investigating will have maturity capital T equal to five years okay so this is the set of the parameters that we have and uh, we will be trying to code the PE. So um, I'll define a variable named PDE that will hold uh, the whole equation. Okay? So according to what we have here move it a little bit down according to this equation we have the partial of the bond price
this is the the partial with respect to t. So one derivative with respect to t plus a times b minus r times another partial but with respect to the short rate r right now plus one half times sigma squared times the second order partial of the bond price with respect to um, the short rate so this is the second order partial minus r times b t t r is equal to zero so these two uh, these two equalities means uh, it's equal to in terms of Mathematica notation okay all right so I have this PDE saved as a uh, PDE and we can now try to solve the PDE so I set up a variable called sol a solution and the solution will be equal to numerical solution and you solve of the PDE uh, given uh, the terminal condition so the terminal condition is that uh, for any rate for any, for any level of the short rate here uh, the bond price at maturity is equal to 1 okay P pays the notion as maturity in other words uh, so this is the this is the boundary condition this is the uh, definition of the PDE then we have to add um, uh, the, the time axis over which we are looking for solutions so we're looking for solutions in the interval in, in the interval 0 and 5 years so we are basically looking for solutions as of now to maturity of the bond and uh, also for various levels of the short rate so we can assume that the that the short rate is could be somewhere between zero and say let's put two here which means like two hundred percent okay I know it's it's a little bit wild number but there shouldn't be a problem with the solution defined like this okay so uh, what's the problem here and uh, the thing is that I haven't told the solver for what for which variable to solve the PDE so we have one thing missing here and we are trying to solve B T R K that that should work now uh, well it says that we haven't put uh, sufficient number of boundary conditions but this sh really shouldn't affect the solutions it's just some warning it doesn't make doesn't mean that it's a problem alright so we have some solution this basically tells, uh, tells us that there is a solution the solution is saved in uh, the variable sol and how do we use that? Well, we say that we want a sol solution uh, 
of the problem when uh, we want to know the price of the bond maturing in five years and let's say that the current short rate is uh, 3 percent which means 0 0.03 and we should get some number that is lower than 1 ah, I'm sorry for this there should be here an arrow and what it tells us is that uh, the price of the bond that matures in five years as of now given that uh, the current level of the short rate is 0 0.03 uh, or 3 percent is equal to 88.2 uh, percent of the notional okay so uh, it will be quite interesting to compare this number here with uh, an explicit number that comes from closed form formula and I have the closed form formula prepared here you can find the closed form formula somewhere on Google and it should be quite close to what we have here okay so the exact number uh, should be 0 0.8824 uh, and we have uh, the same right here okay Th this is just uh, expanded to more digits you can see that it's not like 100% exact but it's quite close and that's because it, there is some kind of interpolation uh, that Mathematica does here but it's, it shouldn't really be a big problem it's uh, digit number I don't know five or six so the accuracy is not that bad and we have basically solved the PDE uh, you know you might also want to see uh, the the surface well the the set of p all possible solutions that we um, that we have uh, that means what would be the the price of the bond if we uh, if we chose uh, and the time axis to go from say 0 to 5 and the the short rate to go from uh, 0 to say one percent, uh, one hundred percent. In order to plot the solutions, uh, we have to use the function plot 3D, uh, and we'll be plotting a function b t big t. R with a solution that we have and we wanna show the results for the time varia variable t ranging from 0 to 5 in the spatial variable um, R ranging from say 0 0.01 to 100 percent which means one we can also label the axis Let's label t r and the uh, outcome variable which will be plot label b t t r okay so this surface here is basically the surface of the solutions that we achieved uh, for this particular set of conditions that we were working with which 
uh, specifically means that well, we have these parameters here uh, and we have chosen the final horizon yeah the horizon to be five years well if we wanted to uh, uh, know the solution for a different say a we, we would have to repeat the whole procedure again so let's say that we now assume that the a is 0.7 B is not uh, 0.02 but it could be 0.01 and the volatility has increased to 0.03 and we are also looking for a longer horizon oh, what's the problem here I don't really see, see the problem I don't know if you do. Huh, that's really strange. I am not saying that this is a variable. delete this I don't know if you really see some sort of inconsistency here but let's go wait once again we have the partial of the bond price with respect to T then we have a B that are both uh, well defined over here and we have the partial with respect to R and then we have um, the Sigma term here I don't know if this makes a problem or what's that cause of this message but I don't really see anything suspicious what happens if we delete it oh, it somehow goes crazy Uh, I think I know what where's the where's the problem. I must first clear our and second sigma. Now it's working. Solve it again. Let's put three here. Solve it. And uh, you got a better looking expression. We can solve it like this. All right. And we can check the solution here in Excel. So here we have 0 0.7. B is is sigma 0 0.03 and r0 is the same and the horizon is a little bit longer and we can see that 
we again have the same solution in here. So that's the uh, solution for the Vashicek model. And uh, what we can do further is that we can derive the solution for the SIR model, CIR. So uh, most of the most of the steps are the same as in in the case uh, of Vashicek, but what's different um, is the stochastic differential equation of the short rate. Okay, so let's take this one out and let's adjust it to make it mm, CIR model. So the only difference between Vashicek and CIR is that we have this square root of the short rate here and that's the definition of the CIR model. So what we can do is that we can take some parts from here that are common and we just adjust it for the SIR model so uh, what we are going to have here is this I hope you can see the whole expression yeah and that's equal to this Over here, notice that this was the square square term. Sigma remains, but we are gonna have R of T here. And the the other parts remain the same. So that is equal to now again we are going to again we are co going to collect the dt related terms we are factoring out u of t and what we're going to have is the following expression so this one don't forget to put the dt term here plus the partial with respect to r times these coefficients plus the sigma term um minus this expression here u2 u of t is um, in front of the uh, brackets and then we have the diffusion term right here times U of t. Okay. Again, what we have to do, we have to kill the drift, which means that we have to set this expression to be zero, and we have also the boundary condition b t t is equal to b t t argument r is equal to 1. So for arbitrary r uh, at, maturity, at maturity the bond pays 1. Okay? Alright. So that's the uh, stochastic differential, uh, sorry, uh, that's the PDE here. And again we can go back to Mathematica 
we can use our previous PDE that we had here and we adjust it so that now it's related to the CIR model all right so where we are here so the PDE let's go through it so the first term is the same then we have uh, this term here that's related to this one that's also the same as in the case of Vashicek then uh, we go have to make a change we have to put R here and that's basically it so the only change was in the R here so that's our new definition of the PDE we again solve the PDE uh, you know what here I would I do not recommend to use zero because the model is slightly different and let's choose some number that is slightly above zero like this for instance that should work the thing is that the SER model is defined in terms of the square root here and I'm really not sure how the solution would behave if we were thinking that zero is here it's quite sensitive to some critical values so we solve it and let's take a look uh, at some example so we set t is equal to 0, r is equal to 0 0.03 and the, the cash bond price should be 0 0.87 Let's check it in Excel. But first, we have to use the appropriate parameters. So, basically, using this set of parameters here. And you can see that we had the same solution as in Mathematica. Okay? So, that was to the uh, Vashicek and CIR models. And uh, as the last model, I've decided to choose. Uh, exponential Vashicek uh, which doesn't have the closed form solution so there is really nothing I, I could use for uh, the exponential Vashicek model here but it still uh, has a solution in terms of the PDE okay the, the numerical evaluation of the PDE so uh, let's do the last case which is exponential Vashicek Let's open new math uh, new math type window, and first of all, we have to define the stochastic differential equation for the short rate uh, in the exponential Vashicek model. So the exponential Vashicek is defined like this: r of t is equal to some e of y of t where this y of t is driven by the Vashicek model so it basically shares the same dynamics as Vashicek where is the stochastic differential equation here so uh, now the uh, the interpretation of the parameters a, b this should be y of t here a, b and sigma is slightly different than uh, what we had in the case of Vashicek or Ser model okay? this, this will be way different interpretation of these parameters okay? um, and if we uh, 
if we did some computations we would get the differential of the short rate in the exponential Vashi check as AB plus one half times sigma squared minus A times natural logarithm of R of T times R of T times DT plus sigma RT PWT okay so that's the uh, stochastic differential equation for uh, the exponential Vashicek model now you can see apparently these parameters sigma AB uh, are different to uh, what we were actually using uh, for this linear or quasi-linear uh, stochastic differential equations here okay well if we have this expression for uh, for the dynamics of the short rate we can again uh, apply uh, the methodology that we developed here so we have the differential of the bond price times uh, the discount process that is equal to I'll continue here now we can again use the same expression here only readjust it to uh, the exponential Vashi check so we have from here and over here we we are going to have this still remains here on uh, this one half as well but this is not going to be R of T but it's going to be R of T squared okay because we are squaring this term okay All right, so uh, now we are going to collect the DT terms, and we have U of T times this term here times DT plus. of R oh, sorry no, it's not the B of R it's uh, the partial of B with respect to R times this term here plus this one half term here minus R times the bond price and what remains is the random component which is U of T times term here alright and that's basically it again what we do is that we set the uh, set uh, the drift to be zero so this is the drift term and we have the PDE and again we can use the same boundary condition because it's common for all the interest rate inter interest rate models and now we are going to solve this PDE okay so let me go back to Mathematica we just rearrange the windows here and 
and again we can redefine the basic PDE so that we have again this time, der time derivative uh, but now we have instead of this a times uh, b minus r we have this bracket here so uh, this is gonna be a times b plus one half times sigma sigma squared minus a times log of r times r I hope it's correct it's a b yeah that should be it um, times the uh, partial with respect to r times uh, the sigma squared times r squared and uh, the rest is the same so let me just use the enter key and we have the new definition of the PDE and now we can uh, solve the PDE so where is the solve command in here and probably the parameters that we have chosen are a little bit wild uh, so that there might be some crazy things uh, in the pricing surface but I hope it's not gonna be that bad we can try to find the solution you can see that the price uh, is way different than what we got from uh, the CIR model or Vashicek model that's because the, the parameters are different the meaning of the parameters is different and also what might be more appropriate is that we do not choose uh, this level of the interest rate because uh, this is a logarithmic or sorry exponential uh, case of Vashicek and it's very sensitive to numbers that are close to um, well you know zero so let me just redefine it now we can see that uh, the error related to uh, some precision has disappeared we can again solve it so we have this um, solution it really looks a little bit wild but we have to trust the algorithm and now we can plot the pricing surface again here we are not going to use that small number but more appropriate one ah no I didn't want to do this I wanted to plot the solution I'm crazy now where is the plot command right here so you can see that um, this is the solution for uh, exponential Vashi check I don't think these bumps should be here uh, it has probably something to do with the specification of the parameters because they are 
too wild for me I would say slightly lower numbers let's say a is equal to 0 0.1 let's choose this one a little bit lower and also choose a uh, smaller horizon Now we solve again the, the PDE, get the solution. Now the number looks much better. And we can see now that the surface seems to be quite smooth, which has, which suggests that uh, the solution is stable. Okay. Uh, again just to remind you, you cannot get, get this number from an Excel formula here because these are just some simple formulas that you can Google out but there is no explicit solution for um, the exponential Vashichek model so you can only solve uh, the pricing problem using the PDE approach that I demonstrated here okay so I, I hope you learned something new in this video and uh, I expect you to return back to my channel thanks for watching this video